I love music. It's what makes the world go round. I've always had a deep connection to beats and sounds ever since I was young and started playing guitar. Yeah, I know, that's me. I went through an emo phase for a little while there. Seriously though, music has always been important to me. I even did a video about how music helps you find your identity for college. Check it out if you want. So naturally, taking something I love so dearly and combining it with another love of mine, video games, seemed like the perfect combination. So I thought it would be neat to look at my top 10 musically driven games. Now it's important to define what exactly I'm talking about here. I don't mean games like Guitar Hero or Dance Dance Revolution. Those would be plastic instrument games or games that make you think you can dance. I also don't mean games with great soundtracks. While those are awesome, in these games the music plays an integral part in the gameplay itself. Whether it's the driving bass that causes obstacles to form or you have to move around to the beat of the song, that's what I mean by musically driven games. Games where the music isn't just a nice addition, but what the game is based around. So let's get started. Ten. Beat Hazard is a space shoot 'em up where other ships. Whoa, man! Let's turn down that strobe effect a little, huh? Gonna get a seizure here at number 10. There we go. Beat Hazard feels like asteroids on LSD. You spin around shooting enemies and gaining power ups, but the music you choose to play pumps in the background and you can see it bouncing in the flurry of bullets you're shooting. Sometimes the game will introduce a boss fight right at the heavy drop or climax of the song. It's a nice touch. You can pick up volume power ups that not only make the song play louder, but it increases your effectiveness against this onslaught of bad guys. There's tons of perks to unlock, and this game was a blast. Nine. Audio Surf comes in at number 9, and it's an oldie but a goodie. You get to ride down the music you're listening to on what looks like Rainbow Road, all the while collecting blocks to gather points. The intensity of the track reflects the intensity of the track you're listening to. Oh, geez, that's confusing. Like, look, this is the track of a Jack Johnson song. And this is the track of a System of a Down song. You go faster and it gets harder depending on the song you're listening to. Cool stuff. There's lots of different game modes to choose from, including one where you have to connect certain colors of blocks to make them disappear. There's also an Audio Surf 2 in development with better song tracking abilities. Have I said track enough yet? Really fun, chill game. Symphony is very similar to Beat Hazard, but it has some cool features to plop it in at number 8. You're still killing other ships to the beat of your music, but there's more metagame to Symphony. The main plot is that you're trying to destroy demons that have overtaken your music. Yes, really, that's the story. It makes for some good variety in the levels, along with power-ups that change how you shoot. I enjoyed Symphony more than Beat Hazard, but all three of the first titles on this list have similar game feel. Roll through waves of obstacles all while listening to the songs you like to listen to. I recommend some EDM or chiptune music for the best effect. Seven. Super Hexagon is a really neat little game by Terry Kavanaugh, the creator of VV V Oh V V WWW. Just like that game, Super Hexagon has awesome music. You have to try and avoid the walls closing in on you as it pumps to the beat. It's a never-ending arcade style game, but it's very hard. Like, stupidly hard. But the music makes it crazy addictive. It's really, really cheap on Steam and worth a pickup if you're a fan of Kavanaugh's retro-inspired neon-colored style. Six. Beat Buddy, Tale of the Guardians. This game infuses jazz and swing tunes with house music, and everything in this underwater world is alive and reactive to the music playing through the phonograph. You can bounce on the bass drum plant, swim through the snare streams, and hit the hi-hat crabs. Boy, that was a tongue twister. Eventually, you can even ride in this machine called the Bubble Buggy, and it only moves to the beat of the songs. It's got cool, colorful atmosphere, and it really was the opening cutscene that sold me. They talk with record scratch speech. You see, oh, 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 I've come to believe the fairy stories my baby, baby, ma told me. As a VC, we give it some fog and blah. I think I'm gonna start what, 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 talking like that until what, what, people get mad and punch me in the what, what, what face. Five. So I'm gonna break my rules a little bit about the music not playing a pivotal part in the gameplay with this next entry, but I would argue that the music in Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery actually does play a big role in the game. It's a fairly straightforward point-and-click adventure game, but the music is what made me fall in love with it. When you embark on the first real part of your journey, you're greeted with this awesome track. Most games have the music made for the game, but I think this game was made for the music. Does that make sense? Jim Guthrie did so good with the soundtrack for this game that I went and bought the album just so I could hear these songs over and over while I drove. I mean, the title of the game has EP in it. The music had to at least be a major part of the creation process, right? Maybe I'm thinking too much into it, but this game definitely gives you a different experience than most games that are like it. And I think the music plays a big role in that. Four. 
I was really impressed with Sound Dodger Plus when I played it for the first time. I've come to expect only high quality titles from Adult Swim games and I was not disappointed. It looked pretty basic from the trailer, but wow, it really drew me in with the great tracks that you can play on. It starts out fairly easy, avoiding obstacles on this record spinning around, but when you try out the harder difficulty levels, you start to see where this game really shines. It starts to feel more like a bullet hell game the deeper you get. There's a vast variety of songs in this game that fit all sorts of different moods you might want to listen to. The coolest part was whenever the songs would hit a drop and the playfield would slow down or chug like a record scratch when the song would do the same. It felt very smooth and polished and I was pleasantly surprised with what this game had to offer. If you haven't played any of the Bit Trip Runner games, you are missing out. The first one was pretty simple and enjoyable, but Runner 2 took the game to new heights I don't know that I've ever seen a sequel do before. They revamped the entire art style and gave so much more content it could barely even compare to the original. Probably the most welcome addition was Checkpoints, but they also added an overworld map, fun minigames, a funny backstory with colorful cutscenes, and all sorts of bonus levels for replayability. It's creative and relaxing as you get into a groove, a lot like the original, but it just feels so much better. They add new elements at a good pace, so the difficulty grows grows as you grow as a player, so eventually you're pulling off really hard maneuvers like it's nothing. It truly has a unique style and will keep you smiling the whole time you play. Two. It would be hard for me to say enough about 140 to do it justice because this game is just downright phenomenal. It takes simplistic game design and brings it to a whole new level. With shapes and just a few colors, this game gave me an experience unlike any other. Of course, the music drives the gameplay as the obstacles react to the beat, but there's something about this game that makes it feel different. Each level will start out quiet, but every time you collect a note, it will add some new element to the music, making it build until the end, when all the different pieces come together to make an awesome electronic track. The bosses are very unique and push this game style to its limits. The the final boss is just mind-bending. It's short, there's only three levels, but believe me when I say it's a must-play. Oh yeah, and also if you play a metronome at 140 beats per minute, it syncs up perfectly with the game. <gasps> That's why it's called 140! One. By combining dungeon crawling roguelikes and moving to the beat of awesome techno music, Crypt of the Necrodancer created a whole new genre of games. You can only move by pressing the buttons on time and you gain coin combos by keeping the rhythm. This game is unbelievably hard and you have to learn the patterns of enemies if you want to survive more than a few floors. It takes a page out of Spelunky's book in its game feel. And it also has the daily challenge so everyone can play the same set of levels each day and see who tops the leaderboards. You see, the problem with a lot of musically driven games is they're overly simple, or only have one function. But Crypt of the Necrodancer answer is incredibly deep and vast. There's a ton of secrets and unlockables, including different characters, weapons, spells, and armor. It is a roguelike through and through. You die permanently each run, and each time the floors are randomized. But the added element of the music makes this a shining achievement above the rest. It's still an early development, but I can't wait to see this game progress into even more of an awesome melding of different styles. So there you have it. The games where music does more than just make you bob your head, it makes you think and feel while you listen. It really does give you a different experience than a normal game, and I love every minute of it. Did I miss a game that you would like to see on this list? Tell me in the comments below, maybe I'll have to check it out. Hey, I'm Snowman, and thanks for watching. You can check out these other videos I've made too while you're here. And definitely subscribe for all sorts of other awesome stuff on this channel. I have a ton of other countdown lists, as well as a series called Good Game Design, where I look at what makes games tick. I hope to see you around. See ya!